the town. Uh, but I don't. Uh, anybody that witnessed his last race truly saw what happened on that state meet. Um, it was amazing to me. It was absolutely amazing. I've seen videos where you see people that you're thinking, there is no way this person is going to finish this race. No way. And then you might, you might see that, you know, 100 yards from the line. Or I saw Maddox at the two-mile mark. I turned to Coach White, and I'm thinking, there's no way he's going to finish this race. There's no way. He finished the race. Not only did he finish the race, he still broke 18. He, without him doing what he did, I, I don't know how he did it. Doing what he did, he didn't know where he was the last mile of the race. He was running into trees. When he crossed the finish line, I could have told him he was on the North Pole and he would have believed us. He honestly struggled. But it shows what type of man this is right here. A lot of people would have just said, I don't have anything left. And they would have just exited the course and just relied on the rest of the team. He didn't do that. And I'm telling you now, without him running the way he did at the state meet, I know he's not happy with his time, but looking how he looked that last mile to finish under 18 still and be our fourth runner on our team, without him running that way, we don't have that. And I say that with confidence. There's no way we have this second place trophy. We're third, fourth even probably. So it shows what type of man this is. It shows how important this team is to him. He won the majority of our races for us this year. Um, he, he peaked early, not because of his effort or his will, because he showed everything he had on Saturday. He wanted to lead this team as, as, as bad as he wanted to. He struggled at the end emotionally. I've never seen Maddox come to tears. It was a beautiful sight. <laughs> it really was. And when we huddled up at the end, um, and he realized we came in second, he knew what he did, I knew what he did, and the team knew what he did. And because all of that, Maddox is our most valuable runner this year. Next up, Perrin Jones. <laughs> Perrin Jones, only a freshman. He PR'd this year, he ran 17-11. <coughs> Pretty sure, safe to say, that is probably the fastest ever freshman time at Waccamaw High School Cross Country. He finished eighth overall at the state meet. He qualified to be part of the all-state team. Top 15 is all-state. He finished eighth. It was a fantastic race. Um, he probably doesn't want to hear this, but I think he had a little bit more in him. Um, he looked very smooth, which is a great sign, but he had a lot left, I think, too, which is an awesome sign to see. Um, he was somewhere in the mix between our second runner, third runner, fourth runner, I think one race, like our eighth runner. But uh, he was always there in the mix, very important runner on our team. And, and to have him part of this program another three years, we are, we are truly blessed and truly honored. Um, he did a lot of things he was supposed to do on his own this year. We got rained out a lot, a lot of lightning, a lot of bad weather. Talk, talk to the team, especially top 10. Guys, you need to run on your own. You need to lift on your own. You need to do this. You need to do that. He was the first one I always heard back from. Coach, I just did this. Text me a little picture of his phone and watch where he just ran. Text me this. Coach, I just did this. You have to do the extra in this sport or it's going to show. And his time of 17-11 at the state meet, it shows that he did the extra. And because of that, Perrin Jones, you get the coach's award. Everybody on the team deserves something. Um, when it was time to give something out, I had to 
think back at a, a point in the season where something really st stood out to me. Um, it was the night before State. Two individuals really stepped up that night. Um, but it was, it was this man's idea. It was this man's idea. What both teams do is they write notes to each other, either the day of the state meet, the night of the state meet, some words of encouragement. On the boys' side, I assigned them to another, another guy on the team. He was assigned to Jeremy. Those two, if you know them, they're like brothers anyway. Um, what we do is we write these notes and they give them to each other in the privacy and you know, they read it and hopefully it has some kind of an impact on them. So we're meeting in the hotel room the night before the state meet and making sure everyone has their notes and Matt raises his hand and he says, Coach, how about we all share our letters with everybody? Now I, I, I rewind for when I'm a, I'm a senior in high school, I would have never done that. I would have been like, man, I gotta write this note and here's your note, dude. <laughs> Coach, I want to read my note out loud. I'm thinking, okay, not everyone has to do it because I see the rest of the guys going, oh my God, do we have to do that? Too? <laughs> no, all right, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, guys, but you're more than welcome to do it. So Jack Moody did it and, and Matt did it. Matt stood up. I had to do whatever I could to hold back those tears. What he said about his teammate or his brother is what he called him. Um, it, it, it moved me. And uh, I knew we had something special when he was up there reading that. It says a lot about him. Uh, the practices that Matt put in day in and day out. Uh, I remember the first time I met Matt, it was, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe he didn't make the baseball team sophomore year. He didn't make the, he didn't make the baseball team sophomore year. He came out to track. Here he is, coach, I want to run the mile. I want to do this. All right, man, let's go. He started here. Everything he did, he did this. He just excelled. He succeeds. And that's what he's going to do his entire life, and I'm confident of that. Confident, a man that stands up and wants to speak about his brother in front of other people and shows up every day to practice the way he did. It's a man in my book. And I'll always have Matt McLeod's back, and because of that, he gets the Warrior Award. to love cross-country, number one, and get him to prioritize cross-country over fishing. <laughs> cross-country fishing. He's a very, very talented young man. It's, it's his first year out here. I've been asking him since, I think, uh, fifth grade when he ran the Pacer test in my GE class in the cafeteria. And, uh, he was running and running and running, and, and you know he had to go back to class. He just did it the whole period. It's very impressive. Bro, are you going to run cross-country? No, not yet, not yet, not yet. Finally, ninth grade, he's doing it. I was happy to see him out there. Um, I don't know how happy he was in the beginning. He wasn't shy about it. My mom's making me do a coach. <laughs> so, appreciate the honesty. Um, trying to change that. And I think, I think we did about halfway throughout the season when we started. He won a race. And you can tell he was, he was truly happy to be part of this team with, with these guys. And started seeing it from region on where he came in second in the region. Joey O'Neill from Ainer, all region team. Um, PR is 17 18. Just very impressive rookie year. Um, and if he, he can be as good as he wants to be, because he's very talented. But we all know what happens to talent when you don't work. So we all need to challenge Burnt, because he could be one of the best runners, if not the best that ever has gone through walk him off. He really puts his mind to it. I think he's. I think he's getting there. He's getting there. So. But because of his amazing season and his first year part of the program, Bernard Anderson gets the Rookie Varsity Award. Like Rob on your team. <laughs> Everyone that knows Rob, a part of this team, knows exactly what I'm talking about. He's hysterical. He really is. He's got a kind of wicked sense of humor, but if you, if you get it, it's hysterical. Um, he's a 
pleasure to be around. Uh, he's just um, a great kid. And he's somebody that I can back and truly say that he's somebody that works extremely hard. And he likes it. He likes being part of this team and he likes running and he likes racing. And as soon as, he's in eighth grade, as soon as he matures a little bit more physically, physically, <laughs> he thought mentally right away too. <laughs> as soon as he matures a little bit more physically, with his time of 1802 as an eighth grader, it's fantastic. I think there was one other kid in our state meet that was an eighth grader that beat him. So he's one or two in the entire state in two, 2A and 3A in his grade, which is unbelievable. So based on his times last year and his fantastic times this year of 1802, Rob Buffington gets the most improved award. did not miss a summer run unless he was going on a family vacation in the mountains running more. He'll work out in, in June or July, which is fantastic. Um, Ryan's in seventh grade. He can tell me his PR. 19 what? Oh, 1909 in seventh grade. That's amazing. Um, yeah. He came very close to winning a few races, a few JV races. Um, I don't think he's going to be on the JV team much longer. I think with his work ethic and what I know he's capable of doing and his attitude, and that goes a long way and that's so important on this team, and his attitude is fantastic. Anybody that knows him like I know him, when you see him, well, every time I see Ryan, I just want to smile. He's just a good kid to be around. So every day it made going to practice after working all day. I knew I was going to see Ryan right away at Stables. I knew I was going to see the rest of you guys right away at Stables. And that was awesome to me. Um, Ryan, congratulations on your fantastic season. You are the JV Rookie of the War. Boy Award is Ben Stover. I'm a broken record when I keep saying I just love these kids. And I, I really do. They just keep coming up. And, uh, I just I really love the team I have. I guess I don't know. That's why I don't see my wife and kid that much. I guess. <laughs> um, ben, I know he wanted to win a few races really bad. One being the region race, the, the, J, the JV region race. He wanted it bad. That day, he's kind of a quiet leader, doesn't really say much. That day, he took charge of the JV team. Um, him and Aubrey, there was, guys, let's go warm up. Let's go do this. Make sure we're doing this. I didn't have to worry about them. I knew they were in good hands. Um, it's fantastic to see him. I'm talking with the varsity turnaround, and they have the JV guys warming up like they're supposed to, doing the drills like they're supposed to. And I knew he was going to have a, a, a great race. And when I saw him come through and PR, by a lot on our home field. Uh, it, it, it took a lot. I, I think I screamed as loud as I could. I'm sure Robbie has it on video, but I screamed as loud as I could. I sounded like my, my little girl. It was embarrassing, but it was well worth it because he did awesome. Um, ben, I'm pretty sure, like I just said with Ryan, uh, you're not going to be part of the JV team if you continue to train and show up like you have. But this year, you are the JV runner of the year. Uh, I'm going to do one last thing with the boys. If I can have all eight of the boys that were part of the second. Yeah, we just have medals for, for our all state teams. We have eight for the guys and nine for the girls. And, um, we just like to recognize them a little bit more because they have two more weeks of dealing with me and Coach Y and the rest of the coaches. So, and traveling and running and racing. So, um, in the beginning of the year, if, if someone told me that we were going to be runner up in the state, I wouldn't have believed you. 
Um, with what we lost last year, five out of seven, and our racing experience at the state meet, I think we had two guys, Jack and Maddox, that ran in the state meet last year. Everybody else is the first time running at the state meet. And for them to do what they did that Saturday, uh, they came together those two weeks where it was just them. They really came together. They believed they could have got first. I believe we could have got first. Guys, let me tell you this. If you ran your PRs by 30 seconds, we wouldn't have beat Academic Magnet. On that day, there was nothing we could have done. But what we could have done is given in. And you didn't give up. You could have easily got third or fourth, like I said earlier, but you didn't. Because of that, we walk away with this. Three in a, year, three in a row. And it's because what you did that day. So be proud. You guys were excited that day. And you were mad at me because I, I, I felt like I thought we were third or fourth when I told you that. And I was wrong. Usually I could tell in a race. I, I could be like, oh my gosh, not good. That's good. I couldn't tell that day. Third or fourth, I wasn't sure. We looked on the phone. Second place, and we got to celebrate uh, like the family we are, guys. So if you could put your hands together for the state of Maryland. I feel like it wouldn't be right if I didn't recognize this team as, as a whole real quick. They did something that no other Waccamaw Girls team has done before in, in the history of cross country at Waccamaw. You are looking at the 2015 Class 2A <laughs> state champions, please. sure in seventh grade she was about seven or okay five sorry she was, she was fifth on the team so that, that shows that with hard work and the attitude that she has and the drive that she has anything is possible anything she didn't just do what we asked her to do that's what a lot of people don't understand she doesn't just do what we ask her to do she's doing more doing extra. A lot of you didn't know that she was working out in the morning at 5.30 in the morning during the season, doing a little light lifting, doing extra jobs. She was doing what it takes to be the state champion. She was doing what it takes to have the school record. And if you think about people that went through the running on the girl side, there were a lot of good girl runners that went through Waco High School. And for have, to have the record, to be a three-time state champion, to have other girls look up to you, to be a positive role model for the program, for the other girls. Amelia Jones, you should be proud of yourself. You should have a smile on your face 24-7. You are well-liked. You are going to succeed the rest of your life, and I'm confident in that. People want to go around you. People want to be around you. People probably want to be like you because you run so well. But I see other people, I, I hear when she's running, watching the girls race, and I hear other people saying, wow, she's fast. Wow, that Waccamaw girl's fast. I go, she's a million dollars. Wow, that Waccamaw, she's a million dollars. <laughs> people are amazed. She wasn't feeling well this past state race. I'm confident she could have She could PR. She could have ran her best time on Saturday. She didn't. She wasn't feeling well. But she beat everybody by 20 seconds. At the, at the highest level, she beat everybody not feeling well. I'm, I'm extremely proud, I'm not even her coach, and I'm extremely proud of me. I'm trying not to tear right now. Um, this, this is not going to be the same without her. It's not. It really is not. And I think a lot of people agree that it's not going to be the same. When we start up in June, I'm going to be looking around, and I'll see parents show up without Amelia. It's not the same. I love you, parents, but it's not going to be the same. <laughs> I'm always going to be like, you know, where's, where is she? 
know, ever since I've been here, Wakama teaching when she was in seventh grade, she was part of the program. She was a face that went along with the program, and it's really not going to be the same. But it's a good thing that she went through because she impacted the program a lot. And she will be missed by a lot, not just myself. So Amelia Jones, because not even what you did this year, the year before, but the person that you are and what you did to this program, you're the most valuable runner this year. I'm proud of you. MB, come up to the stage. <laughs> Mary Butler of Spain, or De Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mary Butler. <laughs> she's, a, she's another one that, when the day is not going as planned, you think about practice and, and the kids that you're going to interact with. And you think of people like Mary Butler, um, and you instantly get happy. There's not a soul that I've ever met in my entire life that doesn't absolutely love Mary Butler. And that's the truth. And I swear I've never met anyone that's not like, I haven't met Mary Butler, she's so sweet. She's so... <laughs> it's amazing. It really is amazing. Um, she should be proud of the person that she is. She's a Great runner, I keep saying fantastic. She's a great runner, but she's an amazing person. What award did you get? You got the coach's award, big surprise. Um, <laughs> talk about somebody who practices hard, too. Um, this was her year. This was her year, she was really gonna come into it and, and do her thing, and we all knew she was gonna get 19. She came up a little short. I know she wasn't happy about that, but the type of person that she is, and she didn't sulk and say, I didn't get 19, I didn't do this. She crossed the line, she realized that her teammates weren't far behind. She realized Amelia won. Right away, she put her team first. It was team number one, Mary Butler number two. And that speaks volume of the family that she comes from and the person that she is. So Mary Butler, you are this year's 2015 Coaches Award. Um, Samantha Kelly, you are getting the most improved award. Um, when she came on as a seventh grader, she, was, she loved the sport right away. Um, she really did. She really didn't come into the sport, in my, in my opinion, until this year. She always spoke about cross country. She had a little competition going on between her and her brother. It's, we, we called it the Kelly Award. Um, I think you beat him, I think. So, uh, Sam is the winner of the Kelly Award. Yes! <laughs> Sorry, John. Yeah, she had an extra race, yes. <laughs> no, it's a good award. Um, again, great person to be around. Uh, she, the work ethic that she put in in the summertime, she spent extra time at the, at the Furman camp, put in, putting in work there, uh, gaining knowledge about the sport there talking to the nutritionists and, and doing what she had to do. She's always finding some kind of thing or some kind of way to always improve. She's competitive. She's sweet, she's calm, but she's competitive. Um, she wants to do well, and you need that. You need people like that to be part of a team to succeed. She's one of the reasons, one of many reasons why this team won the state championship this year. I know Coach White relied heavy on her this year, put a lot on her shoulders because she he knew that she could handle it. And she could handle it. She did fantastic. Say it again. She did fantastic all season long. And Sam Kelly, this year you are this year's most improved. Girl. <laughs> Can I have Riley Allison up here? I'm having a daughter in April, and that's one of the names we're thinking about, so that's why. It was her idea, but I like it. Um, this year, Riley is receiving the Warrior Award. Um, again, just like Sam, I really feel like she came into the sport. She uh, found out her kind of role on the team. Um, 
about midway, I think one of, I don't know if I remember correctly, I think one of the races where you started improving a lot was, is that PD? Okay, PD. I remember, I'm going to tell the story I want, the way I want. It was a PD classic in Florence. Um, I remember she started uh, running really well, and Coach White looked at each other thinking, all right, now we know what Riley's made of, and she started showing it at practice. Um, Last year, I can remember, sometimes we have seventh graders, they come on, and uh, we challenge them. We see what they're able to handle, and sometimes they step up to the challenge, and sometimes they don't. O'Reilly stepped up to the challenge this year. I was very impressed with the turnaround from last year to this year. Last year, I think she was, she was happy to be on this amazing team, happy to be close to the top seven. And that changed this year. Something came out of her that she wanted to succeed, she wanted to do the best she could, um, she's got an amazing personality, she's bubbly to be around, she's always smiling, uh, she's super mature, I've had a lot of cool conversations with her this year, I got to know her really well, which I'm very happy about. Uh, what an amazing girl, and this year she has the award award, Riley Allison. I just love everybody on this team. Sweet girl, Ella Feta. Seventh grade. Um, I remember her at the intermediate school. Uh, a few of the girls here doing the turkey trot, running out back, just beating people really bad. I'm thinking, cross country, cross country, <laughs> cross country. Um, and I didn't even have to say the whole word. I would say cross. And she's like, I know, coach. I'm doing cross country. I'm doing cross country. Yes. Awesome. Um, she is somebody that I am very excited to see if she doesn't go to soccer. Very excited to see. <laughs> what she can do in the upcoming years. Seventh grade for PR of... 21-24. Millie, what'd you run in seventh grade? I know. Just guess. I think it was like Say it was 22. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What was about the same? 22, 22, 30, 17, uh, 17, 17th grade, she's around 21. Um, fantastic start to her career. Again, amazing girl to be around. She's always, Coach, what are we doing today, guys? What are we doing today? Whatever we, whatever we ask her to do, she's going to do it. There was a couple of days where she wasn't feeling 100%. We had to ask her, you know, don't, you're going you're gonna to rest today. Okay, you're going to rest. We need you for the race, you're going to rest. It looked like she was really sad. It affected her. She wanted to be with the girls the whole practice. She didn't want to talk with me. She didn't want to talk with Coach White. She wanted to be with the girls doing the workout, regardless of how bad her leg felt or, or whatever was bothering her. Um, to be that mature and that good and that young, that short, she's, she, she is, to see her run, it's, it's a beautiful sight. I think probably Robbie has it on video. Um, you'll see Ella, this beautiful stride, just finishing uh, beautifully every single race. She looks so good down the finish line. Um, and that's a great sign of things to come for the future years. Um, so we're excited to have her for the next five years. <laughs> next five years. <laughs> um, because of your performance this year and your attitude and, and your effort, you are the 2015 Rookie of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> Miss, okay, Miss Caroline Daniels. <laughs> Caroline. I think she'd agree with me that um, same thing as Maddox and a few others. In this sport, you're going to have things you have to overcome and things you have to conquer. Um, she, she battled a few injuries this year. Um, she overcame it until the end. The last injury kind of came at the wrong time, which is a shame. Um, up until that point, she had, she was having a great year. Uh, the highlight for me with, with Caroline is uh, the PD Classic in Florence as well. She, you know, she was on the border, could have ran varsity, could have ran JV. Coach, <laughs> Coach has tough decisions to make. He decided to put her in the JV race for a few reasons. And the one reason. He was very confident in her 
that he can lead that team and come in first place in the JV race and win the race. And that does a lot for somebody. And I think back, watching her finish, the first girl coming through the finish line and winning the race, seeing how happy Caroline was and running a very good time too. I think it showed a little glimmer of what she's capable. She's only, you're in eighth grade, right? Yeah, very young team. Only, only in eighth grade. Um, so she had, the, the future is, is, is endless with her. Um, she's very into it too. She puts a lot of time in in the summertime and she's somebody that's going to do the extra, the extra things you need to do to succeed too. I can say that with confidence. And, and Coach White, when we spoke on the phone, that's one of the reasons why Caroline is winning the JV Runner of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> So dear. Got a JV rookie of the year. Zoe. So she was on the JV team and a rookie. First time out. I was personally very excited. Very excited to hear that Zoe was running cross country this year. She's fun to be around. She's another one that every team should have. A Rob Buffington. Everyone should have a Zoe Deer. She's on the bus on the way down to Disney. She was in the mix with everybody, making everybody laugh, playing games, doing this, leading the conversation. An awesome person to be around. If you know her, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then all of a sudden, boom, here's this really good runner. She came in in the summertime. Zoe, I didn't know you could run like that. Coach White's like, who's, you know, who's Zoe? Who, she can run? She never showed me that before. She was in my PE class, and she didn't show me that before. <laughs> all of a sudden, she comes out and starts running in the summertime and, and, and just shocks me. And she, she went with it. She went with that talent and she, she stepped up to the next level and uh, kept uh, succeeding. You know, we, we were setting goals for her. She'd get to that goal, set goals, set, go to that goal. There, it's, it's endless. And, and Zoe's another person that can be as good as she wants to be. She's super talented. And um, she took this year serious, but I know there's another level inside Zoe. Um, it's kind of a fine line where you're, you're going to be the funniest person on the team, but also take it serious. It's, it's tough, but I think she can do it. I know, I know she can do it. And again, eighth grade, um, unbelievable future of this girls' team. It's, it's unbelievable to, to, to be around this group with the personalities and the work ethic and, and the talent they have. Uh, excited to see them the next couple of years. So, Zoe Deer, congratulations. You're the JV <laughs> We have the girls nine state team. Please come up. They have one of these as well. Um, I think it's a little bigger. Maybe just because the girl hair is on it. It's a little bigger. <laughs> I'm trying to make excuses. It is bigger. Uh, like I said earlier, um, this group in front of you were, were the girls that kind of made the cut. The, we usually keep eight or nine. If it's close, we keep nine. These were the nine that after the region meet, they stay with us and, and they continue to train for two weeks and they compete at uh, Columbia. They didn't have an official lower state race, but they still went up. They traveled to Columbia and ran in the open race, which speaks volume of this group and, and Coach White. Um, following week, they, they went up. I don't even know if they knew this, but since about every week and a half, there's new rankings that come out in, in, in cross country. The first rankings of the year, they were second. And all they do is, however you finished the year before is how you rank to start. So, Academic Magnet girls were the state champions and they finished on up last year. So they were started number two. After their first race, they were number one. The rest of the year. And I told Coach White he didn't want to hear me because he thought it was bad luck, but I tell him every time I'd see this team step up to the line, every time I'd see this team cross the finish line, I said, Coach White, there is no team in the state that can run with your girls. He'd say, no, no, no. He's, he's uh, superstitious. If you say you're going to win, and I, I get it. I'm the same way with my guys, but sometimes you need to hear it from somebody else. And sure enough, they line up together, they practice together, they warm up together for the state meet. This is a, a tight group, a tight group, and I think they really came into it this year, uh, which is great to see, great to see it form. Um, and to, to watch the race and see Amelia just absolutely smoke everybody. Just turn around, you know, five seconds later, you see the next Waccamaw girl. And the next Waccamaw girl. You see that group? 
you see that group that we haven't seen on the girl side in a long time. It used to be girl finished big gap. Girls finished big gap. First time in a while that they had about the top seven, eight, nine that were close. And that's what it takes. Hopefully the boys and girls see that now. That's what it takes to be a state champion is that tight group of people that are working hard um, and having each other's back. And because that, they did what no other team did at Wakama. And they are now the 2015 state champion. And Maddox. Um, this group right here is, is going to be missed. And I know I said that personally about Amelia. Um, I grew really, really tight to the guys up there. Um, I, can, I, I mean, I told them I loved them a lot. And, and uh, it's, it's heartfelt. You know, I mean it when I say words like that. It's just a fantastic group of guys to be around day in and day out uh, for months, summertime. Wake up at 7 to see these guys and, and uh, just to hang out with them. And They, they believed uh, over the last couple years, this team believed. They looked me in the eye. A bunch of them looked me in the eye and said, Coach, are you ready to be a state champion? I said, yes, I am. They, they gave me everything they had day in and day out. Whatever practice it was, uh, they showed up, did what they had to do, didn't complain, and that's every single one of them. Um, Lawson Murphy somebody that, this is the, for her first year running, somebody also that I remember back in middle school saying, man, that girl can run, she should, um, she should run cross country. It took her a while, um, <laughs> but she, she finally did, and, and uh, I hope she enjoyed it. She did really well. Uh, for a first time runner for this this late in her career she did she did really well and I was uh, coach white and myself we were, we were really impressed all season by uh, the dedication that she had so congratulations but guys you will be missed you will never be replaced and, and uh, hopefully you keep in touch with everybody especially me okay thank you so much <laughs> grateful and last year when I worked with you all year um, I wouldn't be where I am today um, without that year of training with just you and the guys so thank you for everything you did and for your dedication to our team and every individual um, you rock and so um, it's for you.